Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use React Query to basically make fetching in React more comfortable and also give us some functionality which we normally would have to implement in a really complicated way. So let's take a look at it. To get started, we're first of all going to need to open a terminal and to run npm install 10 stack React Query. I already did that, so yeah, it goes really fast. And then we're actually going to work in our main.jsx for now and not in our app because we need to import a provider. So import from Hence that we query. And here we're going to need the query client provider. And also we're going to need the query client. And now we can basically wrap this query client provider around our app and pass it a query client. And that query client needs to be created outside of the React context because otherwise it might be recreated, which we don't want. And we're just going to say it's called client and it's a new query client. You could give this an options uh, object, which we will do later, but for now we'll just leave it empty. And then we can just say client equals client. And that's basically already everything we need to do in the main.jsx. So now we can get into actually coding. So as you can see, this is the default read app. And we're just going to remove everything for now. We'll also need to import one more thing from React Query, which is custom hook. And that custom hook is called use query. And it's actually going to be the first thing we run. So we are not going to read anything from it because we're going to get into that later. We're just going to run use query and use query will get two parameters, an array of strings, which are basically the keys to identify your query. So if you wanted to manipulate it later, you could do that using these keys. And then there's a callback function, which will basically always need to be async. And that function is basically your fetch that you want to wait for until it's done to then render the data. So in our case, we can say, okay, const res equals await fetch. Here we will later call the Pokemon API, and then we want to return res.json. So basically we, first of all, do a fetch, and then we don't await the configuration of turning the result into JSON, because that is gonna be done using use query. Because we are calling the Pokemon API, we are of course gonna give it a key called Pokemon, and then we are also going to need to copy the URL of the Pokemon API. Now, what can we actually get out of here? Well, first of all, we can of course get the data, but also an error object and an is loading state, all of which are really handy because we can now say something like if is loading, return a string called loading. If error, return error colon plus error dot message. And this way we basically already have error and loading handling. So here you could add like a little loading spinner and here you could add a toast or whatever instead of like just text. And if both of these aren't the case, then we can just uh, assume that everything worked and return a div. And in our case, that div is going to contain the data dot results. This will heavily depend on how your API works. In our case, we can just access through data.results.map. Sometimes there might be smarter ways to do this. And because we basically just have an array, we can now say Pokemon and index. And for each Pokemon, we want to render a div. And that div will have a key called index, just so we don't get any errors. And it will contain the Pokemon name, just so it displays anything. And now if we just head here, you can see it's already loading and there are some unexpected token thingies right here. So something ran wrong, but I don't know what yet. As you can see, now it's working. It seems to have been an issue with the automatic reloading from Veed. So always keep that in mind because oftentimes Veed can be really useful, but sometimes the automatic reloading just doesn't work in your favor. As you can see now, we got Bulbasaur, Ivysaur and so on. So everything is working just as intended. But now let's look, uh, let's take a look at whether the other states work as well. Okay, so now we will test the error state. And to do that, we will just rename the protocol so that something that doesn't exist. And by doing that, it will first of all try to fetch a few times and fail by doing that. And then after a few retards, it will just say error failed to fetch. So that one is working as well. But now, if we fix it, you will see, okay, here's the loading state, but normally you wouldn't see that as often. So Let's try to simulate that Veed isn't not working as intended and actually await a little timeout. And to do that, we are just gonna go ahead and say 
okay, await new promise. And that promise is just going to be a wrapper around set timeout that gives us a timeout of one second so we can simulate a call that takes longer. Now if we reload, we're going to see loading for one second and then it says Bulbasaur, Irisaur and so on. Then now it's just one more thing I'd like to show you for which we're going to remove this promise again. And we're going to add a console log called requested because this part is important because it might break your app if you aren't careful. Because now if we reload, we're going to see one requested right here. But if we head back to the app from a new tab, you're going to see the requested repeats. Because by default, this thing ties to always keep your data up to date, which can be really useful, but it can also sometimes hurt you. And if you don't want this behavior, then you're going to need to head back to your main.jsx and actually give an options object. And that options object is going to contain default options. These default options then contain queries. And in here, there's just one key we need to change, which is refetch on window focus and we're going to set that to false as you just saw there are a lot of other settings you can set but we're just going to not mess with those and head back to our app if we now reload and open the tab again then you're going to see requested only gets logged once and that's basically everything we want so i think this can be really useful if you just want some data to be fetched and also to show some loading states and all that stuff i think this is awesome and i also hope that you're going to have a good day